And guess what? Yes. We haven't even told you this actually yet. What's up, what's up, what's up? We have a hypercar coming. No way. Ugh. Ugh. It's too early guys, too early. Good morning guys, welcome to Life of Palos. I am Aaron Palos and now that I'm hopped up on caffeine, we can do our normal delivery and tone of how we do car news. Guys, I can't, I can't even keep up. If you feel like we've been doing so many videos on daily driven exotics and how many cars they're buying, you're not wrong. We did the first video, which was their sort of exclusive reveal of the first Hummer they bought, where they kind of went out and did donuts and did all the fun stuff. We talked about Dave's new Lamborghini Gallardo that he just bought, and all these cars have been bought so far from August Motor Cars up in Canada, if you guys don't know. And then we talked about the second Hummer, which was just sort of, sort of like verified. and talked about in DDE's vlog today. So, you know, we're, we're three cars in, and that's not even yesterday's video, which is talking about how they have plans to eventually get a Lamborghini Aventador, as confirmed on Instagram. So it's very difficult for me to sort of stay and, and keep track of this. And honestly, I forgot that it was daylight savings, so I feel like extra exhausted because I lost an hour of sleep last night. Anyway, okay, so we're, we're brought up to today. So we're, we're past the Gallardo, we're past the two Hummers, we're past the possible. Aventador. Let's talk about what we just saw in the DDE episode, uh, actually of them getting the second Hummer. In 16 minutes in, there's a, there's a little clip that talks about how, yes, uh, Daily Driven Exotics does have a hyper car incoming. And guess what? Yes. We haven't even told you this actually yet. What's up? What's up? What's up? We have a hyper car coming. No way. Yeah, no, freaking hyper. Most people don't know. Okay, well we're keeping it quiet, We're right? keeping it quiet. Right, keeping it on the download. Now, we don't know anything more about that. That could literally mean anything. Now, I, I don't know if we're gonna be seeing something like, you know, a 918, a P1, a LaFerrari. I mean, like, that would be quite a jump up. And considering how many different purchases they've made on different cars, I'm really curious to know what you guys think. We don't have any information more on what hypercar this could actually be. So what do you guys think it's gonna be? Do you think it's gonna be more of a classical hyper? car something a little bit older but was still sort of sort of considered hypercar in the day or do you think it'll be more modern is dd finally ready to get like a 918 which by the way 918 values are dropping pretty significantly so like you can pick one up for 1.2 which seems like a still crazy amount of money but imagine what dde could do with a 918 or something like that definitely cheaper than like a LaFerrari or a p1 there's so many possibilities it's it's hard for us to really talk about intelligently and i, I assure you this hypercar idea that they're going to be getting is probably a a long ways off from now. But I mean, it's something to get excited about. Talk about raising the bar. There's really nobody doing that sort of stuff, except for, we'll talk about Royalty Exotics, you know, for a minute, or Royalty Lifestyle, that they're called. Houston was really the only guy with like an exotic that was really doing the crazy things with the donuts and that kind of stuff. It'll be interesting to see what DDE does with, uh, you know, hypercar level content. I, I, I can't even imagine. So put in the comments, guys, what do you think the hypercar is gonna be? And when do you think we're gonna see it? We just don't know. Now, in other news, guys, on the recommendation of just about every person that uh, responded to our last question. I decided to check out Adam LZ and I've never ever really spent time on his channel before. The latest video that I saw was him putting track mods on his GT350, which was a pretty interesting video. So if you guys haven't checked out Adam LZ, feel free to check them out. Very interesting channel, does a lot of like fun modded cars. Uh, I mean, I'm still learning about him. So, you know, this is sort of our first introduction to him, at least from my perspective. Feel free to check him out. And if, you, if I'm missing particular episodes or things that he's done in the past, let me know in the comments. I'd like to become kind of more well-versed in what he's done. And it's hard to catch up with, you know, a, a thousand different episodes of stuff over the years. So let me know what I should be watching from Adam LZ and I'll, we'll continue to talk about him here on the channel. Now we just talked about cars with Luke, uh, I think la yesterday's episode, but guys, I actually talked about how he hadn't uploaded for a long time. I think it had been like three weeks, uh, at least since he'd uploaded. And the guy, the guy does just insanely crazy work. And he just put out a video, I think it was just yesterday, yesterday or this morning of him putting his first modifications on the Porsche he bought and I I was just blown away. I'm going to include a couple of the clips here while we talk um, but you have to watch it with the audio to get the full effect so please go check out his channel. It is some of the most beautiful footage. I, think, I believe he's in Vietnam. It's some of the most beautiful footage of things that I've ever seen on, on a channel period. Not even just car channels. If you guys are not watching Cars with Luke you are missing out on just 
the most beautiful cinematic shots of like the world that we live in. And, and it's all sort of, you know, eventually centered around cars too. So go check out his channel, go look at his most recent video, you are gonna be blown away. And what episode would be complete without us talking about, well, Hoobie's Garage, who we did an interview with about two weeks ago. If you guys haven't seen that interview, it's pretty long, but we do get into sort of like the nitty gritty of sort of what makes Tyler tick. A very cool guy, uh, like really didn't even know me, but had watched one of my videos and I reached out to him, we did an interview. Awesome guy, incredible channel. If you, I mean, if you're not watch Tubi's Garage, you're also missing out on some of the most like hilarious restoration builds ever. This sort of takes cars and leaves them in a better place than he found them. But he recently picked up a McLaren MP412C, if you guys didn't know, and it's sort of been like sitting actually at, uh, at Tavarish's garage. He just did a video about how his McLaren is banned from doing certain things. And the interesting thing is he talks about is how the MP412C is an incredible track car. Really the first, you know, production model that McLaren Automotive put out uh, to sort of the, the new wave of cars that we saw afterward, the 570, the 60. 50, the 675 LT and everything beyond, the MP412C was really the first sort of iteration of all of those cars in the Super Series. So he talks about how it's a great track car, but you lose your extended warranty if you decide to take it on the track. So he's, he's begging McLaren to allow him to do it. Uh, it's a very cool video and you get to see some action with Tavares too. So if you haven't checked out Hoobie's Garage's latest episode, go check it out. It's a great time. Now here's the uh, sort of time in the, uh, what we'll call it the time in the episode where I get to sort of talk to you guys about something that's not sort of car news related, but it's sort of like related to our channel. And then what I want to talk to you guys today is about people not really understanding what we're doing. Um, and it's, I don't listen to the haters a lot, but I do want to address some of their concerns. So maybe we can do a better job of moving forward as a channel in the future. Kind of what I want to talk about is how a lot of, I hate to call them haters, I don't really know what else to call them though, but people that don't really understand kind of what this channel is doing are calling it lazy, calling it like unoriginal and saying like, I should do my own content. So just for all the people that are, you know, that are saying stuff like that, I get where you're coming from. It feels very different than like a normal channel and it feels like I'm benefiting from the work of others. And in a sense, I am. I'm doing a collection of news that sort of like becomes the content within itself. Um, you know, CNN, you know, if we talk about like a news, you know, outside of cars, CNN is not going out and like making the news themselves, not, not normally, but you know, what they're doing is reporting on things that are occurring and that's how, you know, they, they stay in business. That's how they make, you know, money at what they do is they report on things that are occurring. They're not making the news themselves, but they're collecting the news into a, you know, a one source sort of location for people to sort of consume. And that's kind of what we're doing here. There are so many automotive channels out there and it really, this really wasn't the case until about, I would say about a year and a half ago. Before that, you could sort of keep track of the, the really big YouTubers fairly easily. It's kind of become difficult now because there are just so many high quality channels and there are so many folks that are putting, you know, tremendous amounts of time and effort into the work that they're doing that it's it's good i think to have a central location for you to get like the uh, the, the big sort of news bits out of each of the channels so like you know when stradman buys a new car when he buys an Avedador, or dde looks to buy a hypercar you might not catch it if you follow a lot of channels so this is sort of what we do and i say we i really just mean me it's a one person operation i guess i could include my wife in there if i wanted to but we we talk about sort of things that are occurring in the automotive youtube community and we do slight commentary on it too we talk talk about sort of what, what the public's reaction to it. We ask you guys for your sort of feedback and comments. And we're starting to do interviews with the different automotive YouTubers that exist. You know, we're do, we did an interview with Stradman. We did Hoobie's Garage. We're going to be doing an interview here with Damon and Dave here, hopefully very soon. So we're trying to sort of do something that's not really being represented. And I know a lot of you guys really appreciate it and love it. We're up almost 12,000 subs to our channel in the last 30 days, which is more than I think I got in all of 2018 by, by a pretty tremendous degree. So thank you guys. For those of you guys who really appreciate and like what we're doing here, um, we, we love to have you. And for those of you who don't understand it and still think I'm you know, benefiting unfairly off of the work of others, I get where you guys are coming from, but I hope you guys stay and, and sort of start to understand what we're actually trying to do here. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you haven't liked and subscribed, uh, please do. We, we like providing you guys with up to date. We've done a video a day here for the last week and it seems this is what you guys want. You want daily uploads of what's happening in the supercar community and beyond. I mean, if there's areas that we're not representing, please let me know in the comments. But anyway, have a great day, guys. Have a great rest of your weekend, and we'll, uh, we'll catch you later. Bye.